Anthony Fat Tony Salerno was a La Cosa Nostra member who served as the underboss and front boss of the Genovese crime family. Fat Tony, played by Dominic Lambrodozzi in Martin Scorsese's The Irishman, was the boss of the Genovese captain Anthony Provenzano, who starts a beef with Teamsters union leader Jimmy Hoffa whilst the two were in prison. Hoffa needed Provenzano's endorsement and support for his re-election campaign, given that Provenzano was also a powerful and influential Teamsters union boss. The two are unable to sort out their personal differences to come to an agreement, with their reconciliation meeting resulting in a punch-up between the two. On behalf of Hoffa, his friend Frank Sheeran and his boss Russell Buffalino sit down with Fat Tony to try to come to a resolution. Salerno decides to not pick a side, instead declaring that he will not stand in the way of Hoffa's campaign for re-election, but likewise will not scold Provenzano and treat him like a child. Later on in the film, Hoffa's threats that he will expose the Teamsters' links to organised crime and his promises of calling in loans made to racketeers deteriorates his relationship with the Mafia, and in particular, Fat Tony Salerno. In fact, it is likely in the film's universe that Salerno made the decision and gave the final OK to have Jimmy Hoffa murdered. When we first see Fat Tony in the film, we are told that he died in prison in the 90s after being given an incredible 100-year prison sentence. So why exactly was Salerno given such a hefty sentence? Well, Salerno was thought to have become the boss of the Genovese crime family in 1981 after the former boss Frank Thierry's death. However, he wasn't actually the boss of the family, instead having a de facto role as a boss. The real boss of the family was a man named Vincent the Chin Giganti. The practice of using front bosses to protect themselves was started after the death of Vito Genovese in 1969, when subsequent bosses, including Giganti, had their status as bosses kept secret in order to lessen law enforcement attention. That being said, Salerno was still a powerful mobster, and he was one of nine mob bosses indicted in the legendary Mafia Commission trial of 1985. 10 years after the disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa. Salerno, in his 70s at the time, was the lead defendant in the trial, with the media declaring him as the wealthiest and most powerful mobster in the country, unaware that Salerno was reporting to Giganti. It is thought that law enforcement intentionally exaggerated Salerno's importance and power in order to bring more attention to the case and to land a stronger conviction. The next year, Fat Tony was convicted on RICO charges and given 100 years in prison, a fine of $240,000 and with no option for parole. No matter what, he would die in prison. Salerno's illegal numbers rackets in his prime were thought to be the largest in the world during the 60s, grossing more than $1 billion a year. Before the Mafia Commission trial had finished, Salerno was indicted on a separate racketeering charge, being accused of illegally infiltrating concrete companies to control construction projects and illegally aiding Roy Lee Williams' ascension to Teamsters Union presidency. In 1988, he was sentenced to 70 years in prison. Unlike his contemporaries such as Russell Buffalino, Salerno did not become religious in prison as far as we know. In fact, Frank Sheeran claimed in the book I Heard You Paint Houses that Salerno even ordered the death of people whilst inside. In one instance, for example, hiring a man who had been given an early release due to terminal illness to murder someone on the outside. It is thought that during his incarceration, Salerno's health deteriorated. He was already of an advanced age and a chain smoker, and diabetes and suspected prostate cancer made his final years difficult. In 1992, he died of a stroke at a medical centre for prisoners, alone, as he was not allowed to have family by his side. Thanks for watching.